All right, everyone, again, welcome to our A to J Author Advanced User Forum. I'm Jessica Frank, and I'm the program coordinator here with the Center for Access to Justice and Technology. Our topic today is nested repeat loops. This um, was is kind of more of an intermediate um, level for A to J authors, but it was requested for the live advanced user training at the TIG conference, so I thought that I would redo it here. Um, to share it with the rest of you if you weren't able to attend the live training. A couple of things before we get started. You all are on mute. If you have a question, please raise your hand and I will unmute you. If you are listening in without a microphone today, you can ask your question in the question box. If you're calling in, please enter your audio pin to be heard. And this session is being recorded and will be posted on our Ada J Author YouTube channel. Okay, so on the agenda today, we have four substantive areas. First, what the problem is with repeat loops in A to J and Hot Docs, why it doesn't just work, um, the solution, uh, the A to J component, the Hot Docs component, and then we'll have a little time for questions if you have any questions. So here's the problem. Hot Docs uh, tracks answers in a nested repeat dialog with a two-digit or two-level explicit indexing. So you have, for example, child first name, TE, is the outer loop. And the child loop or the inner loop is child city, TE. So the first, the outer loop is 1, the inner loop is 1, comma 1. However, A to J author only tracks with one counting variable at a time. So the outer loop is child first name, TE, 1. And the inner loop is also 1, even though they're separate um, counting variables. A to J, however, can create a unique index variable for each answer in the inner loop, and that index variable can be used by Hot Docs to simulate the two-digit uh, two explicit indexing and thus have nested repeat loops in Hot Docs and A to J. So here's the solution. This workaround was actually created by Bob Aubin, so big shout out and thank you to him for figuring this out. The solution is to create separate variables in A to J, and hot dogs. So the first three variables that we have in the left column, outside count, inside count, and absolute count, are just A to J variables. They um, are used in the explicit indexing, in the parsing in hot dogs, but they're just A to J variables. Um, they map the corresponding hot dogs variables. The last two, array size NU and ICAP NU, are the same in A to J and hot dogs. So the first variable, outside count, tracks the outside or the parent loop. Inside count, or in hot dogs, child count or NU, tracks that inside child loop. Absolute count is the same as explicit index NU in hot dogs. That's a unique index for each answer in the child loop. Array size NU is the maximum number of answers in any child loop. And ICAP NU is the total iterations in any given child loop. If any of this is confusing at any time, feel free to stop me. Um, and also know that I will post all of this on the YouTube channel and our A to J author website so that you can go back and look at it later when you're actually doing it. So unlike most A to J guided interviews, like I mentioned, the hot dogs variables, or the inner or child loop, are not going to be used in the A to J guided interview. Instead, we're going to create those three distinct A to J variables and hot dogs will have its own variables for the inner loops. A hot dogs computation then will parse and map the A to J variables to the corresponding hot dogs variables to simulate that explicit indexing. So here's the A to J component. And we'll go through the A to J after I go through the specific parts. So this first question is the jumping off question. It's the question that's not going to be repeated um, but it's that starting point for the outer loop. If you've done repeat loops before, um, not nested ones, but regular repeat loops, you know you have that initial question, the how many question. Um, this is similar to that, that starting off point. The magic here happens in the advanced tab. There's four conditions. The four conditions, the first condition sets, uh, increments um, the outside count to one, it initializes the outside count. The second condition initializes the inside count. The 
third condition sets the array size to 10. Here I've set the maximum, the array size again is the maximum number of answers with any, within any given child loop. I've set it to 10. 10 is arbitrary and it's just for demonstration purposes. But in my A to J, I've created a situation where I ask the end user for their child's name and then I ask them for all the cities that that child has lived in in the last two years. I'm assuming here that 10 is sufficient because most children have not lived in uh, more than 10 cities in two years. However, you know your end users better than we ever could. So you can also have the end user set that array size in an earlier question. Perhaps ask them what is the maximum number of cities your, any of your children have lived in in the last two years. They say something like 47. You can set that array size then to whatever their answer is. 10 should probably be sufficient though for um, any, of, any of the situations, but you can change it. And the final condition sets the A to J repeat trigger true false variable to true. This tells Hot Docs that the answers are coming from an A to J interview and invokes the computation variable in the Hot Docs template. So you'll see it later. This triggers the uh, computation parsing. This question is the first question in the outer loop. So here I'm asking for the name of their child and I've used a macro, macro to display the, or, the ordinal. So what is the name of your first child, second child, 32nd child, anything like that. Um, if you're not familiar with macros, we've done a training on that as well. And note here that outside count is in the counting variable. So this tells you that this is the first one, um, and really for my example, the only question in the outer loop. This question also has underlying logic, which you're going to see in this next slide. Here, this logic, the first advanced condition, I'm setting the add inside repeat true false to true. This variable is going to be used by that inner loop in the next question step to create and keep track of the inner loop index for each answer. The second uh, condition is creating, uh, setting the absolute count to outside count times array size plus one. So here, um, the initial value of the absolute count is going to be outside count, which is one. We set that in the last question. Array times array size, which is 10. So one times 10 is 10 plus 1 is going to be 11. So the initial value of absolute count is 11. Setting absolute count to 10 would work. Um, don't have that plus 1 at the end. However, by setting it to 11, you're making it easier, easier to answer track and troubleshoot later um, when you have the hot docs and the A to J components open together because the first array of questions is going to be, answers will be 11 to 20. The second array will be 21 to 30. Um, and so forth. And this makes it easier for you to map where the problem is. So the first array would be um, 11, 12, 13, 14. In hot docs it would be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so forth. It just makes it easier for you. In this next step, this is the first of the inner loop iterations. The counting variable here is absolute count, as you can see at the bottom. And in this variable, uh, in this question, we're asking for what is, uh, please enter a city that, whatever they've said is their child's name, has lived in the past two years. And the only variable we're collecting is city. This, however, is the most important question that I think in the um, nested repeat loops, because it has two parts. It has the buttons part, and it has the advanced part advanced tab parts. So let's look at the advanced tab first. There are five conditions here. Um, I'll give you a chance to look real close, but the next screen will blow it up so we can talk a little bit more. So there's a lot going on in this advanced tab. This is that advanced tab broken down and blown up a little bit. So we have five very important conditions. The first condition, there's the condition, then there's the action. So in all advanced condition, in all advanced logic, we have the condition and we have the action part. So the condition is 
um, add inside repeat true false absolute count to true if it's true and the inside count is less than or equal to the array size if true I want to increment my inside count if inside count is less than or equal to the array size so we haven't hit that maximum number yet which is 10 the second condition increments absolute count if inside count is less than or equal to array size NU. The third sets the iteration cap, that I cap NU, for the outer loop to the value of inside count if inside count is greater than the array size. Four gives the end user some place to go if they have tried to enter that 11th city in my example. So it takes them to an oops, you've entered too many, please go back um, and edit your answer. The fifth, if this is false, if they select move on, which is one, is, uh, one of the options in the buttons, if they select move on, they're done with this child, it locks the iteration cap for the outer loop to the value of the inside count, and it does not increment. Okay. Here is what I consider the two most important buttons if our nested repeat loops. List another and move on. On the left, we have list another, so you can see what's going on there. On the right, we have move on. Selecting list another adds, sets the add inside repeat true false variable to true, and it sends the end user back to the same question. So it's going to say, please enter a city that Jane has lived in in the last two years. Every time they hit list another, it's going to take them back through that inner loop. If they select um, move on, they're done entering the cities that, for example, Jane has lived in. Then it will take them, uh, it will add, the variable add inside repeat true false will be set to false, and it will take them to a destination question that will say, do you want to add another child? And it's also going to um, set that outer loop iteration again based on what they answered. So let's go to the A to J and see how it looks. So I created a pretty simple A to J, but it has a lot going on. So if we go to the back end, it's just a, um, seven simple questions, but there are four questions with advanced logic, two that are part of the repeat loop, and a lot of um, branching. So let's just go through it real quickly to see how it works. Again, this is just the A to J side of it. And I've kind of pre-filled a little bit of the information so we can go a little bit faster. This is the jumping off question. This is the first question. It's not part, it's not part of the loop really, but it's that, st that jumping off point. This is where those four um, conditions are that, that initialize the counters, set the array size, and um, trigger the computation in hot docs, the parsing. So then we start with the name. What is the name of your first child? Say John Doe. Please enter a city he's lived in. Say he's lived in Chicago. I want to list another. If we open up the script, you can see what's going on here. Uh, let's list another. He's lived in New York. All right. Now well, I want to move on and add another child. I'm done with entering cities for John. I click move on. Yes, I want to add another child. My second child is Jessica. She's lived in Los Angeles, Chicago, Palatine, and Jack. Oops, let's go back. Jack, let's go. Move on. Do I want to add another child? Let's have one more child. And let's say James has lived in Chicago only. So I want to move on. Takes me back to add another child. Here's a neat feature you can add for these kind of nested repeat loops. Your end user could become confused. They might not be keeping a list of all the children that they've entered already. So what children have I already answered? And to learn more, you can have A to J author display what, um, what is being held in the variables for the child's name. So you can tell, you can, the guide can tell the end user what children they've already listed, John, Jessica, and James. So if I don't want to add another child, I'm done. Okay, so let's go back and talk about the hot dogs component now. 
So Hot Docs, um, it looks fairly simple, the template, but there's a lot going on here. So I'm going to go through it, and then we can um, break the parts down. So I have an if statement. I have my computation variable. I have my two loops, the parent or outer loop and the child inner loop. And I have the child name first, TE, and city TE are my two variables. Here is the blown up version of the um, if expression. It contains everything. If A to J repeat trigger TF is answered, and if it's true, then do, the, then do all the things that I told it to do. Here is the computation. It's tricky. It seems really hard, at least for me, it did in the beginning. Um, but once you look at it and you think about each part, um, it breaks down pretty easily. And we have my parent loop, which contains the variable, the child's name, and it contains the inner loop. Then I have my child or inner loop, which just has the variable city te, because that's the only thing within my inner loop. All right, so let's go to the hot dogs portion, portion now, and you can see how it works. So here. I have my, um, my simple hot docs template, and I have my if expression. You can see we can open it up. It has all this stuff in it. We open up the computation, and we edit it. You can see it's a little cleaner when you actually um, indent. So I set my parent counter to one. I set my child counter to one. I set my explicit index to whatever the parent counter is, times the array size plus one, similar to what was happening in A to J in that jumping off question. And I want them to do this while, while the parent counter is less than or equal to the outside counter, and while child counter is less than or equal to the iteration uh, ICAP number times the parent number. I want them to set the city. You can ignore the state part. I didn't end up using state in my A to J. But then telling it to increment, increment the explicit index, increment the child index, child counter, sorry. Um, set child counter, set the explicit index, and the whole thing. So if I cancel out here, you can see then that I have my two loops, my child. The outer loop, my inner loop, my two variables, and the all-important end, end. So if we test assemble this, let's see, so I have my January test. Let me test assemble the one part, sorry. Let's test assemble the whole thing. And if we look, here's my variable sheet with my John, Jessica, and James the cities they've lived in, document preview. Here's what it would look like for your end user. Of course, you can fit this into your, um, your templates however you'd like. But this is a simple example of how it can be done in A to J and Hot Docs. So, are there any questions? Okay. Not seeing any. So again, I will um, post this PowerPoint um, to A to J author. And if you want to see specific examples there, um, feel free to email me. And I'll post this recording to our A to J author YouTube channel so that you can check that out as well. And a big thank you to Callie for letting us use their GoToMeeting services. And again, thanks to Bob Alvin for figuring out how to do this. Oop, I see a question. All right, Carolyn, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Um, that, was good. that was amazing. I'm not sure. It, it looks like you can allow the user, you didn't get that far, but to go back in. That's my problem is um, letting them go back in and edit. say they put in, they put in the wrong city mm -hmm. for the wrong child. Is there a way that you can then go back? Get, get back in and, you know, I, that's what I'm wondering is, and we, you know, if you put too many cities in and you put the wrong city in for the child, 
Did you mm -hmm. let the user go back and fix it? Have you, can you do that with that? Um, I, I'm, I think that it wouldn't mess it up if they went and used the back button and did it, but I'm not 100% sure. Right, because I, I think what seems to happen with the A to J counting is that um, a variable gets assigned a value when you're doing a repeat loop, and then you can't ever erase it. You can't ever say it's nothing. Um, I'm just I'm not articulating it very well because it's been a while since I've thought about it, but I think that that's the next step after this. Oh, okay, like it locks it. Pardon? Like it locks the variable basically the first time. Yeah, through. you can't get back there and change it. Um, and I, I, what I'm what I'm having a hard time remembering is what the condi what what the circumstances are that surround that, so that so that you're stuck. Um, you know, with these with these other like we I do other expenses, and I just mm -hmm. I have this feeling that they can't. I haven't figured out a way. I mean, maybe with this system you can. Um, get back in. I have, to, I have to play around with it, but I'm, that would be for me the yeah. I, that's my struggle, but I think this would be a really good way to do it. And then my other question is, um, when you post this, the PowerPoint and the uh, and the video to YouTube, could you also post the hot docs, your your sample hot docs template and your um, your A to J interview? Um, yeah, I don't know where you post it, but one of those places so we could download it and try it? Yeah, for sure I can post those to our A to J author um, okay. website. And okay. I can email it to you if you wanted it, like, right now. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I can do it right now, but that would be really good. That's one of these things is, like, I look at it and I think, oh, God, I know I could use this, but three months later I'm yep. ready to use it and I can't figure out where it is. <laughs> yeah, we're in the process of redesigning our A to J author website, so it will be much easier to find stuff. Um, and kind of it'll all be in one nice place um, okay. instead of kind of haphazard as it is now. But um, I can get these up pretty quickly. Great. Thanks a lot, Jessica. No problem. Have a good one. All right. If there are any other questions, feel free to raise your hand. Put your question in the question box. Okay. And I will, yeah, one of the questions was about... Um, Posting this, I will post everything up to the A to J author website. Okay, so um, I'm not seeing anything else. So um, I will all see you in two months at our next advanced user forum, or we have our new user training next month, uh, first Thursday of the month. Thank you.